Get out. How often out. do you think people would make a joke about telling someone they saw that movie and just yelling at people? Way too often, right? Get out. Yeah, exactly. Just over and over and over. Um, probably too often. Yeah. Uh, I, this is the first time I've seen this movie. This is another one that yeah. I missed when it came out. Uh, I knew, I heard it was great. Never got around to seeing it until we decided we were going to do it for the podcast. Watched it this week. And I thought it was just okay. Um, yeah, it was good. I liked it. It's really um, well made, really well acted. I think it was overhyped. Yeah. And yeah, for sure. It was, I thought, hmm, I th- just thought it would be more interesting than it turned out to be. I don't know. I, I, part of, part of the thing was I knew, uh, what the, what was going on. I had heard someone say uh, that white people are turning into black people. They're kidnapping black people to turn into them. So I kind of knew that uh, was going on when it happened, when I was watching it. So, I, yeah. Like I had just heard someone say that on a podcast or something or a YouTube video. I don't, I don't remember what. Like they just like mentioned it offhand. And so I, like, watching it, I was like, oh, that's what's going to happen. All these, when all the white guys are being weird about like, oh, do you play golf? Let me see your form and do you do MMA? Like all the, that weird interaction stuff. I knew, I knew the, uh, the, where that was coming from. I knew they were sizing them up to be that, like to turn into that person. And so I was like, oh, that it, it wasn't like this big mystery when I watched it. And I don't know if that would have made me more invested if I didn't. I heard this theory that knowing the ending of something is not necessarily a bad thing that you become more invested into the story because you're like, you notice like, you know how, when you watch, say like you watch fight club the first time and you find the ending and you go back and watch it again, there's all these clues pointing to it. Yeah. You're like, Oh, this is so cool. Like I, how did I not notice this? Or like, Oh, it's so clear that this happened. Like, so the idea is if you know the ending before you watch something, even for the first time, then it's still, you're like more invested. And that's not how I've, not, not what I found to be true with this movie. No, cause I would say, yeah, I agree with what you're saying, watching something a second time and finding all the stuff that you miss, but that's because you can see things that you miss. You're like, oh, I didn't even see that the first time. You don't have that reference if you're, Going through that the first time, you don't know if you would have caught that or not. Yeah. Um, but so get out opens up with this black guy walking down the road and this car pulls up next to him and kidnaps him. And then we don't yes. see that guy for a while. Then it goes over to this other black guy dating this white girl who's bringing him back to visit her family. And he's nervous because he's black and he's not sure how her parents are going to deal with that. She's like, Oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Takes her back. And the family's like really like uncomfortably close with him. Um, and then all this weird stuff starts happening to where the mom hypnotizes him and gets him to quit smoking. Because he's, yeah. Yeah. Is the idea behind all that. And, uh, then they start, they have this big party and invite all their pe- all their friends over and all their friends are being like really uncomfortable, uh, with the black guy, like asking him, like I was saying before, like, Oh, how's your golf swing? How's, you know, are you able to jump? And then this other guy who is an art, um, what do you call Enthusiast. that? Enthusiast. But he, he like has galleries. Like, yeah. An art, uh, I don't know. Um, collector. Yeah. He has gone blind. And so he, he like, they connect about art and they're talking for a while. Um, yeah, it's played by Steven Root. Mm. And, uh, so that it's just like, it's just constantly building up this uncomfortable feeling for the main character. Like everything is going weird. Nothing really makes sense. And then everything just kind of, goes crazy instantly and they uh 
they the mom uses the hypnosis that she had done before to put him in this state where he's paralyzed and he can't do anything and right. and then they're going to cut open his head and insert the other guy's consciousness into his head which is a very black mirror esque concept oh it it felt very black mirror which is um which is funny because I, that actor is from black mirror right I had watched this uh right before the new episodes of Black Mirror came out for season three. Mm. So I kind of got confused at what was from Get Out and what was from Black Mirror. <laughs> they kind of ran together. It's That's pretty fair. Um, but so they're, gonna, they're getting ready to do that. And it turns out that his girlfriend was a – she would like – get these black guys to fall in love with her and then take them back. And she would do it multiple, multiple times. But she's bringing them back home so that they can sell the black guys off to be these new bodies for these old white guys, basically. Yeah, it's strange. So that that's the premise of the movie, and that is also... 75% 75% of the movie. I was gonna say that's the whole movie pretty much. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's one of those that are really hard to talk about if you hadn't seen it. And I think that's why I found out the ending when I did see it because you just, there's no way to really discuss this movie without giving everything away. Yeah, pretty much. And so he's got a friend. So they both work in the TSA, right? Yes. Yes. I hated the friend character in this movie. Oh, I I thought he was funny. He was funny, but so tonally jarring that he he bothered me every time he came on. Yeah, he definitely came from a different movie. Yes. He came from, like, he was like Chris Tucker (laughs) slammed into this movie, you know, like... He's sitting there talking. He's trying because he <clears throat> so he works for the TSA, and he is trying to find out why his buddy went missing. Because about two thirds into this movie, the guy gets uh, put under and is missing for multiple days. Yeah. Um, and so his buddy is trying to figure out, okay, what happened? Where is he? What's going on? And he's like doing all this investigation uh, to figure it out. He calls his buddy's phone. The ex girlfriend or the the white girl who was dating the guy answers it and is acting like he's missing that they haven't been able to find him for two days. And, uh, he asks like, Oh, what, Hey, what taxi did he, he get into? And, uh, she's like, Oh, I don't know. It was a local one or an Uber. And he's like, Oh, hang on one second. And he's like yelling at his phone. You're lying to me. I know you're lying. I got you. I'm going to record this. Like it was just an ex, ex, uh, he's just talking to the audience. Basically, right? Yeah, like pretty he, much. That was the whole point of that. It, it didn't make any real sense in a, a character stance. It was just like, oh, he's on to her. He's like, he's going to save the day because he knows something weird is up. Was basically right. what that was put in there for. And I just like really did not like how they did that. Oh no, that didn't bother me. Hmm. Um, things like that don't usually bother me because I don't hate movies. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, you know, it's hard to, cause even now I'm so now that I'm thinking about it, I'm having trouble remembering what was Black Mirror and what was this episode or <laughs> this movie. Um, okay. Well, so he's, he's in the house getting ready to go into the surgery. He's sitting, they have him strapped right, to a okay. chair. And they start playing this stuff on the TV and you realize all the other black characters that he's been interacting with who've been doing all this weird stuff have actually, are actually white people put into their Former bodies. white people. Yeah. And they have him, uh, I don't know the word trained, I guess, to once he hears that certain tone, then he yeah, goes we- under the hypnosis with yeah, the T. He becomes basically paralyzed. He can't move his body, but he can see and experience everything. Which, and that is pretty terrifying. Yeah, I thought they did a really good job in 
in showing how how like scary that would be like, like what that would feel like because he's just like sitting there in this like dark void and can see this screen of his life going on but he's he's screaming and he's reaching and he's just like struggling to get out of it and can do nothing just completely yeah. helpless and uh which it's 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 frightening because stuff like that kind of exists like uh you've heard of like sleep paralysis right yes where people wake up kind of i i mean i'm not gonna act like i fully understand it but it's like their their mind or their brain is awake but their mm-hmm. bodies aren't and yeah. they can't move but in addition to not really it's like laying there being paralyzed in addition to that their brain is still partially asleep, right? So it starts almost hallucinating to where you're like seeing people walk in your room and stuff like that and you just can't move. Yeah, well they people I, see like demons yeah. and stuff like that, just like what they're terrified of. They feel like is sitting I've, on their yeah. chest. I've never had that happen, but Crystal has I think she's had that happen a couple different times. Um, it's been a long time, but she would tell me about it. And when she would tell me about it, I just thought she was exaggerating. Like, I, I thought it was all a dream. I didn't know mm-hmm. what she was talking about. But after doing research and reading people pretty much describe the exact same thing, I'm like, that is horrifying. Yeah. What research did you do? Google? Is that your research? I feel like that word is, uh. I went on uh, Wikipedia. <laughs> that word deserves more respect than it gets nowadays. I consulted the internet <laughs> and found some highly regarded sources on Reddit. Oh, okay. Um, so he is getting ready to go under the knife. He's getting ready to have the, the one guy's consciousness put into his body. And he's very upset and like panicking and is able to uh, get cotton balls from the chair that he's been attacking, like clawing at into his yeah. ears. So when the tone goes off, he pretends to get knocked out and then ends up beating to death or well, almost to death their son who is coming to take him away. And now yes. I've felt I'm worried this is going to sound racist. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I felt like the, the tonal swift or shift from everything that happened to where he goes on this murdering spree because he he kills the son he kills the dad kills the mom uh shoots no he doesn't shoot the daughter she gets shot by the grandpa but he runs over the grandma takes her back in the car ends up killing her uh and like he kills all these people it felt unearned at that point watching the movie i don't know how you felt about it but it, it, like, I get that they were gonna trap him in his brain, right? And they were gonna torture him forever, is the idea. Right. But something about the way he killed and murdered everyone, even though he was trying to escape and they were trying to stop him, it, I don't know, it felt, it just, it, it felt like almost too far in response to me when I was watching the movie. Not, not, mm, I don't know how to explain it. Not that what they're doing wasn't bad. It just, I don't think the movie did. You feel like he he didn't have to kill them, essentially, to get away? Well, I don't know. I I just don't feel like the movie did a good enough job in justifying him killing them. Do you know what I mean? Like, Yeah. And and the reason I I say that I'm worried that it's going to sound racist is because this movie deals a whole lot with race, and that was kind of it overcoming all that stuff, everything they were doing, all this stuff. And I, I don't want it to sound like I think, oh, he shouldn't have killed them because what they were doing was legitimately terrible. I think it just happened so quickly from everything was weird, then he was captured, and then he escaped and murdered everyone. The the from the point you know, oh, this is this is bad to him killing everyone didn't mm-hmm. seem like long enough. Also, the white people were, um, 
uh, uh, sympathetic. You know what I mean? They were, oh, yeah. They were not, they, they did not come across as evil. No, they, they were, they, they were, just were definitely capture. Let, well, hang on, let me, ahead. let me, I think this get is important. Out. So I don't get mis, mistaken. They, they, they did not come across as evil, even though what they were doing was evil. They seem right. kind of weak and pathetic and sad. And they were trying to do something to make that better for themselves. Everything they were doing was definitely evil, a hundred percent. But they did not come across as evil in the movie. So when, when the, the shift happens, when he is freed and he starts murdering them, it doesn't feel on the same level as their, as their characters. Yeah. Do you know what I'm yeah, basic. Yeah, and it's it's what they you know what each one wanted. They just wanted to be what they used to be when they were younger, right? You know, they they like they definitely weren't. Well, I don't know this. Okay, so it's it's hard to say that uh, although this movie deals a lot with race, I don't feel like they were racist. Because yeah, of th- what they were doing. Like, if that, any, that if, never, if anything, they were almost saying like, they, hmm, careful. How now. do I word this? I know. <laughs> they, they saw, they, uh, well, that, that's, that's what the movie is trying to play with. It's trying to right. talk about the idea of, when white people appreciate black people for being impressive, that's still racist. And, yes. Um, but I don't feel like. But, but in a different direction. Yeah. You know, well, the, the idea of being positively racist is not a, not a thing is kind of what the movie is putting forward. But they don't, it, it, I feel like it does it, miss that mark in portraying that message. Almost, I would almost say less along the racial lines and more along just the, the stereotypical lines. Yeah. Which like, which I mean also can be racist. Because the movie never really put forth why they needed it to be black people. Uh, yeah, that's true. I guess it, they could have really just done anyone. Yeah. I mean, I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I missed something. But right. when I watched it from my memory of what happened, there was never, cause he, I think he asked why black people and they're just like, well, you guys have superior genetics or you, you know, whatever. But like there's, it didn't seem to be ro- racially motivated into what they're doing. Like based on what I saw, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't have caught you know, a a great white athlete or a great Mexican athlete or, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't get why it was so racial for the movie other than the movie wanted to talk about that racial well, aspect. I, I, that's why, yeah. Like because, it, I mean, if, if you think about him specifically, mm. uh, okay, so the blind artist guy, the one who, you know, bought him essentially. Yeah. That could have really been anyone because he really just wanted him for his eyes, right? Yes. Yeah. Not because he was strong or fast or any, you know, that well, like he wanted him for his eyes specifically because he was a good photographer. Right, yeah, which had nothing to do with any kind of race. That could have been anybody. Yes. So Yeah. Uh, like that that's the thing. That's why that's why it's, I think it's difficult to talk about because the movie is putting forward this idea of, you know, they're, it's dealing with racism. And why, right, yeah. yes, there is a hundred percent racist things that it's touching on. It doesn't fit with what the movie is doing. Do you know what I mean? It's, it feels very it's forced. It's racist, but they're not racist, if that makes sense. Well, they, they, I think they are. Sort of, but they don't, they don't justify it. They don't make it clear that it's a racial motivated thing. Like it's, they, they definitely, I think are racist, but it doesn't, 
it doesn't, it doesn't clarify it well enough. So you understand like, Oh no, this is definitely a racist thing. Cause like we were saying, there's no, there's no real reason why they couldn't kidnap any other race and do the exact same thing. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Oh, I, and that's I our time. Know. Oh, can you hear that? Yeah, I can definitely hear that. I can barely hear that. <laughs> um, but with all that being said, I think it is a good movie. I think it's entertaining. I think it's interesting to watch. I don't think it is as powerful of a commentary on racism as people put it out to be. You don't think so? I don't think so. Do you think it is? Um, I, maybe not, I guess maybe not as much as like, like you're saying as, as people are playing it up. To well, be. that's, uh, that's kind of the thing that happens, right? Like with Wonder Woman, I, again, I, I've said this every time it comes up. I haven't seen it, so I don't, I don't have a good, uh, first hand, um, right. idea of it. But people hold it up to this when it came out. People were like, this is a great feminist movie. You know, this is like a milestone for us. And like they had like right. women's only viewings and like all this stuff about how like, like this is our, you know, victory. We're making a stand on this thing. And from everything I hear outside of that, like that, that is a hundred percent died down. That, that, view of it is I don't feel like is going on anymore. I don't think people are championing this movie to be this great win for feminism yeah. anymore. But I never got that impression that it was like a, a milestone or anything like that. But now it's kind of just like a generic okay superhero movie that it it's better than the rest of DC stuff, but like that's a pretty yeah. low bar to hurdle, you know, like it's, it's not, it's no one is talking about it anymore because it was just all right. And yet that's kind of how I feel about get out. Like it, it's a good movie and I think Jordan Peele did a great job, but it, I don't, I don't see it as moving the line of racism forward or, you know, like I don't think it really affected anything in a positive or negative way. So what do you th- what do you think uh, affects in a in a more positive way? Get out or Zootopia? <laughs> um, that's the that's the other one you had an issue with. You felt like it missed its mark. Well, that was just uh, there was just so much going on that it didn't choose a mark. Yeah, that was the problem with Zootopia. But like with Get Out, I don't feel like like what or even you- not or even <clears throat> Bright. <laughs> Get Out is definitely better than Bright. But what do you think? Oh, no, that's for sure. What do you think the message or the takeaway of Get Out is? Like, you watch People that. People be crazy. People be crazy. But, like, what is the, like, what would it motivate people to change? Right? Like, that's, uh, if it's a commentary on racism, it should be pointing people into doing something different. Like, hey, you see this thing? This thing's a problem. Let's change that. Yeah. What is it pointing out? It's a, it's only pointing out that there is racism. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it, it, and it's not even pointing out it very well. Like what, how, but it, how but this maybe, racism is it, is, it, is that their intention? Like maybe it's just supposed to be a weird sci-fi movie that you know on the surface does look like racism, but really it's just rich people being weird. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that was like the maybe intention, but like, they weren't, they weren't trying to expose racism or shine a light on it because, I mean, obviously there's racism in the world. They were, you know, like I said, on the surface, oh, it is racist because they're kidnapping black people and they're auctioning black people, this and that. But then when you find out the deeper levels to it, it's, it's, it's more just a science fiction element to it. Yeah. Less racism. Well, that's, I would, I think I would agree with you more on that. I think that's probably what the creators intended. But I felt right. like when it came out that the, the story or the, what people were championing it for was this great commentary on racism. And that's not, 
That's not no, the movie. I don't I believe saw. it is that. No. Yeah, I mean, and you, yeah, it's, it's, you never know what the, the story is going to be between what, you know, the, the director, writer's, uh, intention is and, and how the public perceives it. So, uh, who knows? No. I don't know. It's, I, 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 I haven't really heard like Peel talk about it, so I don't know what he has to say about it or anything like that. No. But I don't know. It's it's uh it's an interesting movie for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's uh, good. I think it's I think it's definitely worth watching. I just think I thought oh, I was going to see something different than what I ended up watching. Do you know what I mean? Like Yeah. Yeah. And on the same way, the only thing that I really knew, I I didn't know almost anything about it other than it deals with racism. Yeah. That's, that's, and that was it. So, you know, like, like I said, on the surface, it does appear to be that movie, like him being pulled over by the white cop on the way out there and having to like go through extra hoops to satisfy the cop when he shouldn't have to. And, uh, you know, stuff like that. It's like, oh yeah, this is, this is racism. This is what this is tackling. And, but then it just goes a different direction. Yeah. It's, it's wild, but I, I, I liked it. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest takeaway for us is that we are definitely racist. For sure. Yeah. Like that's, if you take away anything from this episode on the podcast is we hate all racists. Not, yep, not, that- we don't hate all racists. We hate all races. Just want to make that clear. All, all of them. All of them, individually, equally, the same. Yes. Now, would that be racist if you just hated everyone equally? Is yeah, you know, I'm wondering because I, I, because I guess technically, wouldn't racism be like treating one race better or worse than another? Yeah. So if you just hate everyone equally. Then you can't be racist. Like right. if, if you <clears throat> if you went around, this is dangerous territory. <laughs> if you went around throwing out like racial slurs, but you were equally racist against everyone, does that make you a racist? I uh, well, I mean, I guess if you it depends on how you define. It. If you define racist as someone who hates a certain race. Then, yeah, you would still be racist, even if you hate all races the same. So you could still be racist, but you can't be prejudiced. Or you still yes. be prejudiced. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I, <laughs> none of this matters. <laughs> Cause at this point, we've lost anyone who's still listening. That's true. So it's just us. It is. That's how it's always been, unfortunately. We, <laughs> yeah. Well, anything else about Get Out? Um, oh yeah. Well, one thing that I, that I was actually really worried about that was going to happen was at the end after he's killed the mom, the dad, the brother, and then the, you know, the girlfriend's been shot and like she's laying there in the street and then the, the cop, you know, the cop car shows up. Yeah. I'm like, oh great, he's just going to get shot. Like, yeah, that's what I expected. I thought he, you know, just. Just as a, and I, you know, I thought maybe it was even going to be the same cop who pulled him over. I was like, he's going to, he's going to pull up on the scene, just going to see, you know, take it at face value, make assumptions. And this guy's just going to get shot before he can even, you know, talk something like that. Well, uh, yeah. And then it didn't end up being that, but well, he, he definitely killed everyone, right? Other than. Other than the daughter, other than his ex girlfriend and the grandpa, who was a black guy, because the yeah. black guy, the black guy shot himself in the head and shot the the ex girlfriend. Yes, but everyone else he definitely killed, and so there is like not even you couldn't like prove it with, um, you know what I mean? Like if the cop showed up and did his job correctly and didn't just shoot the guy and kill him, uh huh. If he went through and like looked at all the evidence. He'd be like, yep, no, you murdered everyone. 
you're gonna you're gonna go to prison like hey but like, hold on you you killed this guy with what like antlers yeah you killed because this- <laughs> they were gonna put a white person in your brain okay <laughs> and so i definitely thought it was going to end with him going to jail or getting yeah. murdered. I, I thought he was going to get shot. Which would have been like a Black Mirror episode. Yeah. I thought he was going to die. I thought the police officer was going to pull up and shoot him. But it turned yeah. out it was his buddy in a TSA car that had siren, yeah. or lights and sirens. And I felt like that was a very strange way to end it because it leaves you with a lot of questions. Like, okay, everyone's dead, but they're definitely going to go after him for the murders. Yeah. Know? Like once they and do how, investigate it all, like it's not like it's just gonna disappear. Are they gonna go gonna to the police? Any of this? Yeah. Are they? Is he gonna take them to the police so he can report what happened? Are they gonna believe that that happened? That is that even possible in this world? Does anyone else know about this technology? Like, I I was like so like curious about what happens next because this is definitely not the end of his story. Like, right? No, for sure. He. He's either going to go to jail or he's going to be on the run or the, the other guys, the other, everyone else who's involved with all this are going to like clean it up and hide it all. Like, what, like I'm so curious to know what happens next. Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Um, you get to just fill in the blanks yourself, I guess. Yeah. Well, anything else about Get Out? Um, no, I'm going to say that was it. Yeah. We, uh, we, over on our Patreon, we're running a competition. Whoever has the least amount of votes ends up having to pay a, a punishment at the end of the month. Um, pay the punishment. You can vote for Taylor or Allen. Whoever, whoever wins doesn't have to pay one. At the time of recording this, uh, I, Alan, had to have my legs waxed, and then Taylor had to have, or had to eat a Carolina Reaper, and then I had to do the Bean Boozle Challenge. So you can find all three of those videos up on our YouTube channel. Woo! You can follow us on Twitter at Icing That Pod and like us on Facebook. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we also like to thank our sponsors, Boss Play. Boss Play is a uh, escape room in Oceanside, California. If you're around that area, you should definitely check them out. Get around that area, people. 